Hello students. Welcome back to my video channel, The Goddess of Econ. I hope that you will enjoy today's lecture, in which I plan to explain the linkage between marginal product or productivity and marginal cost using calculus. For those of you who are not yet equipped with a sufficient mathematical background, my previous lecture without the use of calculus will just suffice. Anyway, let's begin our journey now. Let me begin by newly defining the concept of marginal product using calculus. Well, under the assumption of the production function's continuity and differentiability, and assuming only one input to production, labor for simplicity, it is defined as follows. Marginal product of labor equals dqdl. This definition of marginal product is slightly different from that without using calculus. It no longer represents how much the output would increase if the input of production increased by one unit. Rather, now it represents the ratio of an infinitesimal change in Q to an infinitesimal change in its input, L. In other words, it is the instantaneous rate of change of Q in response to an infinitesimal change in L. Here, an infinitesimal change means a very very very, very small change. Well maybe that was quite heavy for some of you, I know, but it's just one way of interpreting a simple derivative. In fact, MPL is basically the first derivative of the production function with respect to L. Now, let's turn to the cost equation. As I have explained in my previous lecture, the total cost of production can be broken down into two parts, the fixed cost and the variable cost. If you differentiate this equation with respect to Q, this simply becomes an equation for marginal cost. Marginal cost, using calculus, is defined as the ratio of an infinitesimal change in the total cost to an infinitesimal change in the output produced, which is simply a derivative of the cost function with respect to Q. And now, if you can recall that the fixed cost part does not depend in any way on the quantity produced, you can see that the derivative of FC respect to Q simply becomes zero. Therefore, what really matters is only the last term, involving the change in the variable cost. Therefore, we can say that MC measures the instantaneous rate of change of the total production cost, which is equivalent to that of just the variable cost. And now let's recall what the variable cost meant in the case of just one input, labor. Under this simplifying assumption, the variable cost is just the wage rate times the unit of labor employed. That is, W times L. So if you differentiate the variable cost equation with respect to Q, you'll get W times DLDQ. And again, this equals marginal cost. Now in order to move to the next step, I need to bring in some math rule called the inverse function rule. Let me explain this quickly in the simplest form, as this is not a math class. Consider a function, yx. Suppose that each value of y yields one and only one value of x. Then the inverse function, xy exists, and according to the inverse function rule, the derivative of the inverse function is simply the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function. Maybe, it would be a lot easier for everyone to understand if this were written mathematically dx dy equals 1 over dy dx, hence, the reciprocal of the derivative of the original function. So given that mc equals w times dl dq, and that mpl equals dq dl, using the inverse function rule, we have mc equals w times 1 over dq dl. This in turn can be rewritten as mc equals w times 1 over mpl. So, it is quite clear that MPL and MC are inversely related to each other. This in turn implies that diminishing marginal product is associated with increasing marginal cost. Lastly, I would like to emphasize that these concepts are key to understanding basics of the producer theory, or theory of production, and properties of the supply curve, especially in the short run. So, students, do not forget what you have learned today. Economics, even at the beginner's level, can be quite difficult and boring, especially for those who are not mathematically minded or who are not familiar with interpreting graphs and mathematical equations. However, even though economics may seem like a boring subject at first, the more you learn, the more fun you will have. It is quite an interesting field, and you will know what I mean as you explore the subject to the more advanced level. Someday, you may even find it as sexy as I am. Anyway, hope you did not find today's lecture too difficult. I tried my best to make it as simple as possible. I will come back soon with more interesting lectures in economics both at the introductory level and at the advanced or at the graduate level. So, please come by often. May God bless you all.